welcome. I'm Ellen Kirkwood and you're joining us on uh, Behind the Minds of a Part as part of the Sydney International Women's Jazz Festival. Um, I'm here on Gadigal Country in the Eora Nation and uh, I want to pay my respects to the uh, elders past and present of, of, this, of this country. And uh, yeah, I'm here with Sandy Evans. Hey, Sandy. Hi, Ellen. Great to see you. And I'm on Camaragal Country. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Thanks. Great. Um, so it's really nice to have you here with me. Um, for anyone who doesn't know Sandy, um, you should. What's wrong with you? <laughs> 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 um, she is an amazing saxophonist and composer and teacher and just all round inspiring person and she's here with me because she's one of the uh, featured artists on the the big huge suite I wrote for Sirens Big Band. Um, oh and she's also a doctor, <laughs> Dr Sandy Evans. So uh, we're going to answer some questions that Seema have sent us about a part and the performance and uh, other related things but before we do that I'll just um, tell, tell you all a little bit about a part it's it's a big suite of music that I wrote for Sirens Big Band plus special guests including Sandy and it um, it deals with lots of things that are really important to me and are important to a lot of people they're, they're big issues uh, such as climate change and the refugee crisis there's also um, you know so part of it is my comment on how the internet sort of both um, connects us and divides us and uh, it's also there's also some sort of reflective sections about you know where do we go from here and how do we react to this um, and uh, so so what you're going to see is actually um, the second half of a parts premiere performance at the E.O. Myers studio at UNSW we're going to uh, go th to some questions that Seema have asked us. So the first question is for Sandy and uh, it says, you've inspired a great many young female instrumentalists in your work and practice. Who inspired you when you were coming up? Yes, well, look, I had so many people who inspired me and they've kept on inspiring me right up to now, including, of course, you, Ellen, and anyone who doesn't know you should and will after this, that's for sure. Um, but I thought I'd, um, you know, given we've only got limited time, I thought I'd just speak about a couple of women who were significant to me when I was, you know, starting out in my um, study and career in music. Um, the first one is the um, string player, Clace Pierce. So she uh, is an amazing musician. Uh, she was in um, my first band, Women and Children First. She played electric viola in that band. And she was very, um, you know, real innovator in, in the Australian scene. She was a member of the experimental rock group, um, Mackenzie Theory. And um, so I had the great privilege of traveling around Australia with Clace in a bus that we bought and we camped. And it took us seven months um, just playing music and exploring Australia. And, um, you know, she, she was a real mentor to me. So yeah, I, I wanted to acknowledge Clace. I want to acknowledge uh, Judy Bailey. Um, Judy was one of my teachers at the con. I was in her ensemble for a while, but prior to that, when I was a teenager, I had the good fortune to see her play in Kuala Lumpur with her band. And that was, that was amazing, you know, seeing this just incredible piano player, this, you know, very slight woman with this huge imagination and this big personality in her compositions and, and on the piano. And of course, Judy, Judy has remained a huge inspiration throughout um, up to the present day. And the other person I want to mention was um, Diane Spence. She was a sax player that I went to the con with and we were together in a punk jazz band called Great White Noise, an amazing band led by Michael Sheridan. Yeah, it's a phenomenal band. Um, and anyway, um, Diane... I think she's been back in New Zealand for a long time now. She was a, um, a Kiwi, but really amazing musician. And um, I, I wanted to mention her. Um, so there's many, many others, but I was sort of thinking back, you know, to that period of, of that formative period where, 
where role models are really important to you. So there's another question for you, Sandy. Um, uh, okay, and it is, what else do you think we need to do to encourage and support diversity in jazz and improvised music? Yes, now that's a big question, of course. Um, <clears throat> I think we have to keep having these conversations. And I think, um, I think it's about trying to make progress on every level. So by that, I mean on an educational level in, you know, right back to sort of even preschool, you know, where, where ideas are formed about who does what and why and, you know, that, that type of modelling that goes on there, I think is, is hugely powerful and important. And I think, you know, we have to keep thinking right from there, right through to the end of life, really, you know, because these things don't change as you get older, the, the environment changes. And I'm very happy to say that I think the environment has changed very positively thanks to so many people who've been, um, you know, having input into that. So education, I think, is important. I think, um, you know, dialogue about it is, is important. I think uh, opportunity is important, things like this festival. Um, and uh, I think, um, you know, possibly quotas are necessary I don't know that's a contentious issue you know um, and then I think um, what I think is most powerful is exactly what you have done creating music and um, everybody hears that music they play it they see it you've had um, you know women and gender diverse people playing this music and that's in itself I think probably the most important statement so I think all of us committing to our creativity to our musical practices as as well as we possibly can um, and then uh, reaching out to audiences um, to respond to that I think that's the that's the most powerful thing that we can do and of course there has to be opportunities for us to do it so I think you know wherever possible um, us well anyone creating opportunities for um, music by gender diverse people to be heard is also very important all right next question is for me um, it is were there any specific experience experiences or composition processes that influence the creation of a part this is another huge question i could talk for ages about this i will really try hard not to um i, I guess i'll preface this by saying um when i was uh, so i i um i was awarded a mentorship grant from the australia council for the arts um for a mentorship with composer pianist barney mccall and um, I guess in a nutshell, uh, he sort of made my brain explode um, <laughs> in a good way, in a good imaginative way, in a way that sort of was so affirming of my wildest imaginings. He basically sort of, A, um, you know, told me to just go for it with, with, with my imaginings and see where it took me and to 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 really sort of deeply get into uh, you know experiences and tapping into how they could be maybe interpreted into music um and so like because i had these ideas like i like that was another thing um you know he's into you know making making music that has meaning and so am I. I'm also into narrative, um, you know, having a bit of a story, even if it's not a particularly obvious story, um, it, that thinking, thinking of a narrative to the music that I'm making sort of helps the ideas flow and develop. Um, so because I'd been thinking of all these things that I wanted to write music about like climate change and, and you know, how crazy the internet is and stuff like that, I, I kind of just sort of, uh, I mean, another another one was. I mean, actually, probably the the most obvious um, uh, sort of one of those where I sort of delved into something to get an emotional reaction was when I went and saw some um, a, a few documentaries about um, refugees um, on Manus and Nauru, and um, it's yeah. It, I mean, it emotionally was really impactful, and I tried to put that emotion into the music that I wrote. Um, in fact, last night's um, 
last night, Sarah, you will you will have heard Sandy going for it on a on a soprano sax solo in a very sort of fast and furious. That was me. That was me going like, ah, how how, how is this possible? Why are we doing this? this is terrible. Like just being and being you know generally angry at our at our government and mistreatment of um of refugees. Um, in in a part three, which you're about to hear, um, there is uh there's sort of this juxtaposition between the reality and the danger of climate change as opposed to the um the absurdity and the fakeness and the greed of the people who cause it and um and i and i'm not excluding myself in that because it's it's more about you know first world countries and capitalist societies and you you know let's get all political but um um, so you'll hear that, you'll hear that there's there's sort of a music that's kind of a bit like weirdly cheesy um, <laughs> and then there's weir- there's music that's sort of like a big sort of crescendo um, to this sort of, it's sort of, that sort of expresses my sort of the, the, the immenseness of, of the problem of climate change and also my deep love for nature. Next one's for Sandy. We're about to hear a pretty out there solo from you in a part three. Can you tell us about that? Oh, yes. Well, um, one thing um, that you've, one one opportunity you've created for me a couple of times now, Ellen, is to tap into something I love, which is really the sense of the absurd and the surreal. And yo, oh, you have just such a great brain for that. And I'm so glad that you've um, you've opened a couple of those doors to allow me to step into that world. So anyway, um, so when you first brought this um, chart along, I, I just <laughs> loved the instruction that you wrote on the score. So I think it was um, a la Alan Jones, a.k.a. Opinionated Codger. Ranty. Ranty was in there as well. Yes. And, um, you know, just this idea that um, that people could be sort of climate change deniers and, you know, but beyond that, this just this kind of like whole culture that we're, we're in where sometimes we just cannot believe what we're hearing on the radio or the fact that some people do believe it. Uh, well, many people, it's quite scary. And um, anyway, so um, it's, it's, I think the backing you'd probably describe as sort of within the cheesy area. So and when was it called cheesy tongue in cheek swing? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and so I was sort of thinking, my goodness, how can I, you know, how can I approach this? What can I bring to it? Um, and I was just going to quickly bring in a reference here to somebody that, uh, was another big influence on me and that was Roger Frampton. Um, and Roger was one of the first guys I worked with who was, uh, really into playing with, with toys. Um, as a sort of musical feature, you know, and of course there are many others, you know, like Adam Simmons had that amazing toy band and then people like Han Benink and also Greg Sheehan's done a lot of amazing, you know, sort of percussion-based music using toys and, you know, there's there's a sort of a tradition of it really. Um, Anyway, I had some toys that I'd been gathering over time. I don't bring them out very much in case they misbehave. Um, And um, so I just sort of, brought them along to the rehearsal as I remember Ellen you might have a different memory and and I thought okay I'm going to try this and see see what Ellen thinks Uh, (laughs) you were thank you thank you for indulging me (laughs) so we've got like slide whistle and um we've got some um you know some little um Delphia pig a Philadelphia pig, exactly. Yes, some animals and, um, you know, various little percussion instruments. And I think uh, at the performance, I may have um, sort of tried to take on a bit of the Alan Jones persona with a hat um, and interspersing this with saxophone um, playing. So um, that's the approach that I took. 
and uh, I, I had the most fun. I really did. I think everyone did. <laughs> What's going on? We hope the audience enjoys it and um, we hope that, um, you know, it's fun and it's surreal and it's, uh, but it has, you know, as Ellen was saying, the music has a, um, a, a purpose and a meaning. So it was also great to be able to, you know, place that type of of um, performance within a really meaningful context it's such a good solo <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks Ellen. Uh, that'll do for the questions um, but I'll just tell you tell the audience a little bit about what they're about to hear so I've already talked a little bit about a part three um, I'll just maybe I'll just mention the soloist in the two parts. So yeah, Sandy's solo in a part three. I have a solo in a part three. Um, <laughs> and yeah, as you as and that the part three um, is about uh, yeah, it's about greed and climate change. And then in a part four um, starts with an apocalyptic bass solo by um, Jess Dunn, the Jess Dunn, the band leader, which you uh, heard from yesterday. Uh, there's also solos by Gian, Gian and Andrea and another one by Sandy and it's sort of the part a part four is it's kind of it's it's like a kind of where do we go from here there's a bit of there's sort of all the emotions and and then uh, you know there's sort of grief and melancholy but there's also some defiance and determination in there and um oh yeah also you will be seeing the beautiful and interesting and creative visual projections by cleo Mies. um so we hope you really enjoy this and also if you didn't catch last night's airing of a part of parts two of a part which are called a part one and two is, is that confusing? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's up on Seema's Facebook site and on YouTube. You can probably just see it wherever you're seeing this one and they will post a link to it under this video. So um, thanks very much for chatting to me, Sandy. Thanks for the invitation, Ellen. It was great. <laughs> and hope everyone enjoys watching the second half of the Apart Suite. Thanks very much.